let's talk about programming. More specifically, we're going to talk about the differences and similarities between Python and Java. So I'll be wearing this shirt when I talk about Java, and this shirt when I talk about Python. I'd say we're about equal here. I concur. While data is typed, variable names have no fixed type. So this is perfectly legal. There are no type declarations. All data in Python are objects. All assignments implicitly involve pointers, but there is no notation for pointers. Wait, 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 but if these are mutable objects, then you'll get into the same trouble as with aliases in Java. Yeah, but in Python, numbers and strings are immutable, so you don't have this problem. String concatenation is denoted by a plus, as in Java. But Python does not do implicit conversions to string type. So you've got to explicitly change the type before concatenating. This is not the case in Java. String conversions can be implicit. So in Java, we would do this. In Python, we'd have to convert the integer to a string first, like so. Notice the lack of semicolons? Python has a tuple type, and assignments in tuples are element by element. So we can do multiple assignments and have them return multiple results. Compare this one-liner to the Java code to swap the x and y values. Hey, it is not that bad! Line break delimits statements in Python. Semicolons are only used if we want multiple statements on one line. While blocks in Java are enclosed in braces, Blocks in Python always come after a heading ended with a colon, then consistently indented underneath. Functions always have a heading and a body. An example of this in Java is... The equivalent to that in Python is this. Look how clean it is. Oh yeah. Since Python is not statically typed, there is no declared return type. Python functions actually always do return something. Python has a special object, none, much like null in Java. If no data is specified in a return statement, Python returns none, like in a Java void function. Java's Boolean operators, and or and not, are replaced in Python by words. And or and not, go figure. Outside of a for statement, in is a Boolean operator used to find membership in a collection type, and so is its negation. Lists in Python semantically correspond to something between an array and an array list in Java. Literals and some basic operations can be done much more neatly in Python than they can in Java. We've got x is a list, y is a list. We can concatenate the two just using a plus sign. We can even have repeated concatenation using a multiplier. And then we can just append something to the end. The list size can be whatever it wants to be. In Java terms, this mutates y from 8.5 to 8.5 negative 3, just like an ArrayList add method. Let's talk about how Java does indexing and slicing. So we've got this lovely segment of code here. Let's say we have a string s, compute. Now, below, I've shown you what the indexes of the characters of the string are, so we can more easily see how indexes and slicing are handled. Oh, this light is going to be a problem. So we've got string s is equal to compute. So what's the character at 2? You can see that the character at 2 is m. So what is string sub 1? Well, that's going to be inclusive 1, exclusive of the last one, so it'll be omp. What's string sub 2? So pute is sub 2. The equivalent to that Java code segment in Python is this. We've still got a string s, but the type is not declared because this is Python. And it's the same index values for each character. We're going to look for what it is at 2. Again, it's going to be m. Now, what is it from 1 to 4? Inclusive of the first, exclusive of the last. So, omp. And what is it from 3 onwards? Pute. Since the end is not specified, that just means until the end of the string. The notation with the square brackets is known as a slice. This same notation can be used with other sequences, lists and tuples. For example, look at this list. We've got... 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. So, what will a slice from 1 to 4 return? Remember, the end is exclusive, so we start at index 1. It's going to return 1, 2, 3. Java has an equivalent of the slice called a view. However, in Java, the view mutates as the larger collection changes. Unlike Java, Python makes a shallow copy when a slice is used in an expression. 
I should mention that the len function gives the size of any collection or sequence type. Like so. Python has a convenient piece of syntactic sugar which allows slices to have negative indices. So for a positive k, it's evaluated like this. In particular, this denotes the last element of a sequence, which is super handy. Let's talk about programming.